we look at a surge in experimentalism in British music. Hello and welcome back to Dubious Engineering. <laughs> what is it I hear you asking yourself? What is that strange grey object? Well, it's the finished version of what I've been working on. <laughs> and what has he been working on? Oh, apparently it's a Bluetooth speaker upgrade. So when the wife and I were out in Taiwan uh, having a lovely little holiday, we came across this tiny little Bluetooth speaker. Um, it was the only device that we had that we could play music from, uh, and it was small enough for us to carry around. But unfortunately, it's broken down. So with the use of a few basic tools, I have gone ahead and I pulled it apart to establish what the problem was. I believed it was probably the battery that was the cause of the problem, because it just didn't power up anymore. Anyway, uh, on pulling it apart, I then subsequently found out that the battery that currently looks like a large pillow um, was indeed the problem. So this is a little lithium ion or lithium polymer cell and um, it's gassed up horribly and this is normally what happens when they basically break down and they stop working. In order to try and fix that problem, it's time to 3D print a new enclosure and stick two big fat hairy 18650s. Admittedly, we're going to lose the small size and functionality of that tiny speaker, but I haven't been able to find anywhere to buy those tiny lithium batteries. Let's get into Shaper 3D software and start designing ourselves a new enclosure. So here what I've done then is I've created a, a base, which you'll find out in the near future is a little bit too small. Um, and uh, that'll contain the two 18650s and the top bit there, which the speaker will slide into. So there's a whole bunch of ancillary parts that we don't need. So we're just going to move those to one side for now. Let's have a quick look at the PCB. Now, the PCB's got a push button on it. Uh, that turns it on and off and it also has a little uh, micro USB port on it. So I went ahead and put together some extra slots in my little enclosure design to accommodate the push button and the micro PCB and also put a little tiny hole in there so that I could feed cables through from the battery compartment. And then I made a push button that will go in the hole. Now, again, as you'll find out in a minute, none of this worked properly. It sort of worked after a fashion. The plan is to go ahead and uh, print that up on the wonderful 3D printer. In the meantime, whilst the printer's doing its thang, I went ahead and started putting some... Well, first of all, I put one of those uh, plastic, uh, plastic screens back in place in order to seal up that speaker enclosure. And then I put a shed load of Gorilla Glue in there. And hopefully that means that that speaker enclosure will have a similar sort of cavity size to what it did before. So it should, should be tuned in a similar sort of fashion. And that Gorilla Glue nicely seals things off. So then let's take a look at the 3D printer. How are we doing? Well, it's about a four and a half hour build process. So um, yeah, bear with us. Oh, look at that, as if by magic, we're about three quarters of the way through. And what you can see there then is the enclosure starting to tape shake. Another little um, a super speed jump there. And there's the finished product, absolutely lovely. Right, well, let's peel this off of the easy peelsy surface plate that we got. And look at those bad boys. They do look really quite pleasant. And actually, to be fair, um, I'm sort of pleased with the quality of the prints that come out of my printer. It's uh, reasonably impressive. Um, and you can actually turn it down and, and set it on a much finer print setting as well, which makes things even nicer, but takes even longer. Now, I know I'm going to get into an awful lot of trouble with you lot right now. You shouldn't be soldering onto lithium ion cells. They might explode. I agree with you, Safety Sally. I know that wasn't a lady's voice I was doing, but it's true. You've got a very good point. But then that said, I've been doing this for so long now and I still haven't had one that's gone bang yet. Uh, I've got hundreds and hundreds of these things kicking around in various different projects in the house and mainly in the shed because I'm a little bit nervous about them after I've soldered onto them. We've soldered up a couple of lithium ion cells in parallel and then what we're going to do is stick a bit of tape around them and uh, put, uh, put those cables or 
route those cables through into the appropriate places so that they'll pop through that little hole that you saw earlier nicely and we finished taping that up and we've routed the cables through the lovely little hole and then and shove that little blue bundle of joyous goodness into that hole and it's actually a beautiful fit probably a little bit tight it's a beautiful fit horizontally and they fit in nicely but unfortunately later on as you'll see when we come to close the two parts of the clamshell together it doesn't really work out very well for us so we're soldering on the power cables now so one of those power cables you'll hopefully notice there i've just gone ahead tinned and uh, put a bit of tape over it so that it doesn't touch the other one and short out and burn all those cables out and potentially set fire to everything in the house because they're lithium ion cells um, and then what I'm doing is just uh, basically finding out the appropriate places where the power cables came from on the PCB and soldering these bad boys in place <laughs> so there's the button let's just give it a quick test first there it is nicely working yeah happy days um, and also that some sound came out of the speaker so we know everything's working here um <laughs> i'm such an idiot i designed the enclosure um with that usb port at the top there uh, but i didn't put enough room in the enclosure in order to route that pcb into that position into that location and then on top of that those batteries stick out a little bit too far so you got a choice of two different tapes gray 3m tape or black aldi tape um, and I sort of looked at that button and found out that the button just again wasn't quite on target with my design I clearly need to spend more time on my designs and um, uh, proofing them before I print them uh, but it is what it is so what I've done is I've gone with uh, a bit of folded <laughs> a bit of folded cardboard um, for the button push which actually works a treat and I'm quite happy with it uh, and then I've gone with that lovely grey tape as you can see um, it's beautiful you can almost not tell you can hardly tell that this device is taped up it looks so nice <laughs> all right I know I'm taking the mickey um, but there it is and uh, yeah it was a fun project and it works a treat uh, I'm quite happy with it uh, it makes quite a significant amount of noise for its size and clearly now it's going to have the old battery the old battery life was actually quite impressive it was about sort of five or six hours and with this in place i expect that battery life to be considerably better it wouldn't surprise me if it'll run for about 24 hours off of uh, off of a full charge so there it is uh, obviously i've forgotten to cut around the little uh, usb port there but great news the uh, led that's on the pcb uh, shines through the tape which is quite pretty um and this thing does actually work quite well i'm quite pleased with it anyway i know you're gonna laugh and i'm sorry it was a bit of a disaster but the functionality is there it works it was fun to do thanks ever so much for watching people take care have a wonderful wonderful week and weekend stay safe give us a good old thumbs up for more and uh, perhaps stick a comment or two in down below you're welcome to make fun of me for being such a muppet cheers and beers bye for now